Hi everybody, welcome back to the fourth installment of the Palisades Muppet Marathon, a video series where we unbox and take a look at nearly every major Muppet figure released from the defunct toy company Palisades from the years 2002 to 2006. In this video we'll be looking at some of the exclusive figures Palisades released, and they did a lot. Almost a bizarre amount of Comic-Con exclusives and website exclusives, both from their own website and other websites, uh, toy uh, manufacturers' websites, all that kind of stuff. Like I said, almost a bizarre amount, so I definitely don't have all of them. Uh, but I do take a very strong personal liking to these kind of cool windowed boxed exclusives that they did. Mostly from the Comic-Cons. These were usually found at Comic-Cons. Uh, today we've got my four top favorites, including the Tuxedo Gonzo with Bernice. The Culinary Catastrophe Swedish Chef with the Lobster Banditos. The Stepping Out Bunsen and Beaker and Adventure Kermit. Up first is Gonzo and Bernice. He's wearing his tuxedo. This was actually a Target exclusive originally, but Target backed out and they repurposed these figures as a uh, Comic-Con exclusive, specifically Wizard World East from May 21 to May 23, 2004. I love the packaging that they went for with these uh, types of figures, just because it's in a box, it looks so clean, so sharp so displayable just like this and it's so easy to put back in the box okay let's get these open up there's bernice the eyes are just a, just a bit different from the camilla version and there he is there is gonzo and his very very nice tuxedo Looks like he's got a little bit of a paint misapplication right here in his lapel, but that's perfectly fine. What matters most to me is the paint on the face, and it looks like they did a very, very, very good job. Nice, clean pupils and eyelids, and inside the mouth also looks very good. I love it. I love Gonzo in this outfit. It's probably my favorite outfit for him. Uh, at least from what they produced. This is probably my favorite just because he's got the tails in the back. He's got the nice bow tie up here. I just love it. He looks very, very good in this uh, in this color scheme. For articulation, we've got a swivel at the head. Just like that. A ball jointed shoulder. A swivel at the bicep. Elbow joint. A uh, swivel at the wrist. Got a swivel at the waist, got legs that go back and forth, a knee joint, and uh, yeah, that's it. He's also got some nice soft feathers up here, back and front, very nice. He's got a nice soft rubber suit with the tails in the back, which are also, also the soft rubber. I just love that. Very, very nice way to start off this video with uh, Gonzo here. Just a great figure. There's the record case with the record inside. It's very easy to just remove and then insert again. Very cool. Next up is Adventure Kermit, or Indiana Jones Kermit, as I like to call him. Essentially because that's exactly what he is. He's Indiana Jones, or Kermit dressed up as Indiana Jones. There's the back. Adventure Kermit. If you want to pause the video and read that, you can. I'll get a nice close-up image of it. There's more of the exclusives on the back. This was the first exclusive that I got, and I've had them for a while. I took them out of the box at one point. Man, so you can see the tape's already been cut, and the idol's upside down. Let's get a movement up. Got the iconic bullwhip here. Got his satchel. He's got the uh, Indiana Jones hat. Here's the fertility idol, or I guess it's just the Gonzo idol in this version. <laughs> That's so weird. All right, hands down, the coolest Muppet action figure to ever exist. I bet you never knew a Muppet could look so freaking cool. Of course, the way Kermit's head is shaped, Makes it kind of awkward for 
I'm having to wear a hat like this. And the magnet doesn't stay on all too well, but it gets the job done. It does, however, leave this kind of brown rubbed paint on his eyes because it rubs up against the back of his, his eyeballs. But as long as you've got that hat on, you'll never be able to tell. The paint on this figure is just, just amazing. It really does look like an Indiana Jones jacket. Like there's just not, there is not a beat that was, was missed in the production of this figure. It's all perfect. I mean, look at that. They even got the stitching of the jacket, the stitching inside of it. That's just amazing. The belt, or the, the two belts that he's wearing with the buckle, and of course the satchel that's all weathered and patinaed like that. Of course the head, I think. The head is just a, a re... A re uh, just reused from their classic Kermit figure, but it really doesn't matter. He's got the feet that are sculpted into the pants and the pants themselves. You got the stitching there and the pants in front and back, the pockets even, just that texture, that beautiful texture. There's the Gonzo fertility idol. And of course his little revolver not much to that, just a little piece of plastic, but he's got this great bullwhip accessory. He's got great articulation too. He's got a swivel at the neck, ball joint at the shoulder, swivel at the bicep, nice elbow joint, a swivel at the wrist. Just like that. A swivel at the waist. He's got a nice soft rubber coat, and you can see the, the details and the wrinkles underneath. Legs that go back and forth, as well as knees that go back and forth. Nothing at the nothing at the ankles. And of course the little revolver can be placed into its holster just like that. Seal that shut with the revolver inside. That's awesome. That is just awesome. And of course the satchel does come off, that's removable. Just flip that up and off that goes. The satchel's also very nice, soft rubber. There we go, Kermit as Indiana Jones. A collaboration of two of the most awesome characters of all time. Enough said. Next up is stepping out Bunsen and Beaker as they appear in their uh, tuxedos. Just like Gonzo and Rolf. You really can't have one without the other and they realized that and said, you know what, we're just gonna put two full-size figures in this box. And that is just great. Really not much to it. The packaging is just about the same. You've got a Bunsen honeydew on the side and beaker on the other. Very cool. Okay, let's get them opened up. There they are. All right, there is Bunsen. There is Beaker. Okay, there they are. And they're very nice tuxedo outfits. That's great. Very, 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 very nice paint on both of these. Not sure why he's always looking up with these figures, but he's looking up. And uh, at least the paint between the nose is kind of clean. That's something they also kind of mess up quite often. He's got the logos back here on the back of his legs. That doesn't look very good. Would have been easy to hide underneath his shirt or something, but it's okay. There's a little bit of a smudge right there on his pants, too. That's okay, really. This isn't my primary Beaker figure. I've got another one, his regular outfit from the Muppet Lab set. Here's Honeydew with his glasses on. Paint looks very nice on this one. Nothing really to report here. Bunsen's articulation includes a Swivel at the head, ball jointed shoulder on his left arm, elbow joint there, and a swivel at the wrist. On his right arm, he's got the ball joint shoulder, a swivel at the bicep, a swivel at the wrist. I don't like this joint, I understand. It's just a recasted piece from his, his normal figure, just in black. I understand that. I just, I don't really like it. 
doesn't really quite fit. Uh, and the hand sculpt really doesn't quite fit with uh, this version of the character as well. But um, whatever, that's okay. Uh, swivel at the waist, swivel at the legs up there, nothing at the ankles. Very, very nice sculpting on the coat. And nice sheen on his coat as well. It's got that soft rubber jacket. Very nice and a shiny lapel there. Also very nice. Cool. For Beaker, we've got a swivel at the neck, ball jointed shoulder, elbow joint on both arms this time, and a swivel at the wrists. It's got a uh, swivel at the waist as well as well as swivel up here at the, well, down here at the ankles, as you can see. It has that nice sheen on the on the back, as well as some nice sculpting details. I like how they gave him kind of these baggy sleeves and these very, very, very short pants. <laughs> kind of matches with this character. So there we go, two more classic Muppet characters and their uh, nice, dapper, black and white penguin suits. Okay, last but certainly not least is the Culinary Catastrophe Swedish Chef with Lobster Bandidos. This is by far what I'm most excited to open up today. I love the Swedish Chef. I love their version of him. I love the sculpt they did. And I love the fact that it comes with not one, not two, but three Lobster Bandidos, all with their revolvers and little hats. This was released at San Diego Comic-Con in 2003, July 2003. There's the back. Swedish Chef on the side. There he is. Wow. This is just great. This is great. The Adventure Kermit's nice, but this is my favorite. We got one of them out. <laughs> That's awesome. And they're so big too. They're really nice. There's no articulation I can see, but wow, these are just great. I love these. Here we go, folks. There it is. The Lobster Banditos with the Culinary Catastrophe Swedish Chef. Probably one of the most unique looking Muppet Palisades figures, simply because he's got this really messy, a food splattered apron and just everywhere. It's everywhere. Not just on his apron, but on his face, and his bow tie, all over his pants and shoes. His hat even has got some uh, right around there in the back a little bit. Got this other one over here, just for reference. As you can see, there's really not much difference other than the fact that he's wearing a pink shirt or a red shirt, he's wearing a blue. And he's covered in food. Oh, he's got the uh, the checkered pants here, the blue and gray checkered pants. He's just got the gray, flat, matte gray pants. The one little deficiency with this figure, I know you can already see what it is. It's the uh, the apron doesn't cover this this patch of unpainted. This section here, the apron's supposed to go over this, and I did try to readjust it to, sh to shift it around. As you can see, the buttons also aren't aligned. Yes, yeah, so how you can tell, it's shifted too far to the left. I did try and shift it back over and it just, it won't kind of, it won't do it. And I don't want to break it. This is a soft rubber apron and I don't want to tear it or mangle it in any way. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Might try and go back at it at some point. He's got the magnetic hat, as you can see. Just like that. Great shading on the eyebrows and the hair in general. And the Lobster Banditos are no exception either. These are just great figures. And of course, they've got their little hat and mustaches and their revolvers. Here he is next to a Muppet Chicken. Chef's articulation includes a swivel at the neck, ball jointed shoulder. He's got an elbow joint and a swivel at the wrist, as well as a swivel at the waist and swivels up here at the upper leg, which don't really do a whole lot. So there you go, folks, another video in the bag. We've got Adventure Kermit, Swedish Chef, Gonzo and Bernice, the Banditos, and Bunsen and Beaker, all of which are great, great figures. If you like this video, make sure to stay tuned for video five next week. I've got videos one through three already posted in my Muppets Palisades playlist. 
Make sure to go check that out. In the next month or so, I should have a really nice kind of big reveal of uh, the Muppet Show backstage uh, set that I've been working on building from scratch. Stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll see you next time.